Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Oliver Shane Dumawal, auditor of the Bayerix Association of the Philippines. BRAP extends its warmest greetings to all of us as our beloved organization BRAP celebrates its Sapphire Year. BRAP's fifth start in a few minutes. Please stand by. Thank you very much. Sang awit ng Pilipinas. Good evening, colleagues. I am Larry J. Langaman, BRAP's incumbent assistant auditor and your host for this segment of the celebration. It is my honor and great pleasure that I am tasked to moderate the opening segment of the fifth founding anniversary of Bayeris Bi Association of the Philippines Incorporated. And I am certain that I will be included in the 10th anniversary celebration as this is a milestone in itself for BRA. And to welcome us for tonight's virtual celebration, may I call BRAP's Assistant Secretary, the amiable Ariel Aquino. Good evening, fellow BRAP members and members of PACMAT. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the online stand of the fifth founding anniversary of the Bioris Association of the Philippines 2015 Incorporated. Sit back and relax as we unfold the five years that was for Europe 
with of course our official Philippine Association of Medical Technologies Incorporated or PAM. This celebration is five years in the making and the organizing committee wishes that this be a momentous and fun-filled event, of course, with your participation. With that, I welcome you all and let's have a good time together. I call on now the Secretary of DRAP and the Chair of the 5th Founding Anniversary to formally welcome everyone to tonight's celebration. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Leila Lani Lorento. Good evening, my colleagues, and to all who are here celebrating with us the DRAP's 5th Founding Anniversary. The association's secretary is usually tasked to formally open an event, any event in an association, just like BIRA. With no hesitation and with full of excitement and enthusiasm, I accepted the task given to me. So with that, in my capacity as BIRA secretary and overall chair of the founding anniversary, I formally opened the celebration and wish everyone a happy virtual celebration. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Florento, for officially opening tonight's celebration. Sit back and relax, everyone. We have just started with our celebration. It is my honor and pleasure to be tasked to introduce our keynote speaker tonight. He serves as the Director of Scientific Programs at Health Security Partners, a nonprofit organization based in Washington, D.C., and dedicated to building local capacity for health security globally. His training is in molecular biology and biochemistry, and he holds a Ph.D. from Johns Hopkins University. After conducting bench research for a few years, Dr. Prasad moved to the field of global health security, working through a number of nonprofit organizations to strengthen laboratory and health security capacity. He has been supporting partnerships to prevent, detect, and respond to emerging global threats in the Philippines and across the Asian region since 2006. Dr. Prasad and HSP have been a partner of BRAP since the very beginning, working on multiple efforts to strengthen biosecurity systems in the Philippines. With that, we welcome our keynote speaker for the BRAP 5th Founding Anniversary, Dr. Prasad N. Kodavale. Good evening. Uh, this is Prasad. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. Um, let me quickly share my screen and then we can go from there. Let me start by saying that um, it's a great honor to be speaking to all of you on this import very important occasion, the fifth founding anniversary of BRAP. So um, I wanted to start off by um, wishing Everyone at BRAP, a happy fifth founding anniversary, um, particularly um, uh, the BRAP board with whom we've been working very closely, as well as all of the um, 600 members, I'm told, around the country. Um, congratulations. Uh, this is a great day, and we wish you the very best from Health Security Partners for the next five years and beyond. Um, I wanted to show two pictures from our partnership. Um, you will see on the left, um, our first ever, um, uh, part, first ever joint activity, the BRAP HSB lab network meeting that happened in Cebu back in 2016. And on the right, you will see, um, the last event that we did together in Colombo. And this was a bio-risk manual writing 
workshop. And this was particularly special because um, it was not just BRAP and HSP, but it was a collaboration with the Pakistan Biosafety Association. And so I just wanted to show this picture because uh, this was the last activity we did before the pandemic. And also um, uh, BRAP is not just a value add for the Philippines, but the kinds of programming that BRAP is coming up with um, has been you know, recognized by other countries and other associations. And they have the Pakistan Biosafety Association, particularly, you know, they came to us and said, could you please uh, have BRAP come and do the virus manual write shop for us? Um, and, and currently there are, you know, about 14 institutions around Pakistan that are developing their uh, biorisk manuals thanks to this effort from BRAP. And I also want to say that uh, we, it's a great pleasure working with BRAP always because it doesn't feel like work. Um, whenever we work together, we also have fun. And um, I want to show a picture to illustrate that. Um, Here's uh, Doc Martin in uh, Baltimore, Maryland, um, with a with a local crab. Um, so, with that, um, let me move to the topic at hand. Um, I wanted to share some thoughts about biosafety and biosecurity. Um, what what does it look like now, and what is it going to be post pandemic? Um, in particular, I'd like to talk about three questions. How has the pandemic affected biosafety and biosecurity? Which seems quite obvious, but uh, it's worth taking a look at. Um, what are the current needs? And what are we going to do next and after the pandemic? And all of the investments that we are currently making into biosafety and biosecurity systems, how can we use all of that and leverage that to build better systems for the future? And I should say that um, what I'm sharing with you today is not just my, uh, you know, my thoughts. Um, this is thanks to the contribution of all of our partners around the world with whom we are working. They are the ones who are coming up and talking to us about what is needed, where, where are the gaps, how can we do things better. And so this is sort of a collection of their ideas and opinions. So pre-pandemic, this is what the National Diagnostic Network looked like for most countries with a national reference lab and a few sub-national labs that would jointly work together to meet the diagnostic needs of the country. And so you can see there are just a handful of labs in each country that were prepared to deal with a high-risk pathogen. And this is what it looks like now in many countries and most countries where pretty much every lab that is available is being tasked to start testing. And um, I can tell you that in some countries, even animal health labs have been called in and they are able to do um, real-time PCR. And so um, you have animal health sector, you have the private sector, of course, and you also have university labs joining the human health labs around, uh, around the country. So what does this mean? Um, let's take a look at a few examples. Uh, I was told that in the Philippines, there are now more than 80 labs and more coming online. Um, in neighboring Indonesia, there are more than 250 labs and in a country like Pakistan, we find there is something over a hundred labs. So if we assume that there are, you know, a minimum of five people in each lab, we are talking about um, lots and lots of people who are now handling um, high-risk pathogens around the world. And most of these people are probably, uh, many of these people are working for the first time in a BSL-2+, uh, uh, laboratory. Um, and this is a safety risk because uh, often they have no experience of handling 
high-risk pathogens. And this is also of security concern, as you know, to uh, various people because uh, a lot more people now have access to this pathogen. One of the immediate needs, of course, is rapid training. And, um, you know, for, for these, these labs don't really have a bio-risk officer, but let's say a bio-risk POC for lab technicians and also for lab managers and supervisors who are managing the whole thing. Um, and uh, several organizations, I think a lot of biosafety associations or bio-risk associations are conducting training programs, including BRAP. And uh, most of these are virtual. Um, in addition, where possible, we are also uh, in a couple of places supporting in-lab mentorship so that if a lab wants to start doing uh, molecular testing, then uh, one or two technicians from that lab go to a lab that's already testing and they learn one-on-one uh, -on -one, and then they come back and set up their lab and get ready for testing. Um, of course, um, it, there is a need to network all of these people with labs that are more experienced. And there is also a lot of need for continuing education to keep these people uh, updated on safety and security issues. For um, some of the questions that we are getting from the labs that are engaged for search capacity, uh, they want to know how they should hire new people so that they are reliable from a safety perspective and from a security perspective. There are also, there's also interest in some cases where they want to control access to the pathogen for the new people because they don't have experience. And so how do they set up systems within their lab in order to do that? Um, those are the kinds of questions that are coming up from the labs that are beginning to conduct testing. Now, I think an important question for all of us is how do we make smart investments so that we meet the pandemic needs and build systems for the future? For personnel, we talked about training and continuing education. I will just quickly point out here that all of the national and international guidelines for COVID as well as for you know, uh, general biosafety and biosecurity all call for risk assessment. And this is for people who are new to biosafety and biosecurity and to risk assessment. This is a huge gap and this is a really difficult thing to be able to do after one uh, webinar or after you know, one session on biosafety and biosecurity. Um, and this is, this is an area where investment is needed at various levels in order to help people with risk assessments. And I would also say that people are, a lot of people are able to do biosafety risk assessments. Biosecurity risk assessment is pretty much non-existent in, uh, in, in many countries. Um, we hope that we can take all these new people and put them on a pathway to become bio-risk officers or a pathway to IFBA certification uh, and keep them interested and engaged in biosafety and biosecurity to build a culture of responsibility. And I will also say that in some countries, there is a lot of interest from the country to develop a directory of labs and personnel uh, that would be available for future health emergencies so that they don't have to scramble if there were to be a health emergency in the future. Establishing systems. Um, as you know, many countries are now coming up with national biosafety and biosecurity guidelines that are specific to COVID. And I show here an example from Indonesia. Um, if you have developed national guidelines for COVID-19, then that is pretty much a precursor for down the road to, de to develop national biosafety and biosecurity guidelines for the whole country, which is a requirement uh, for many, uh, you know, many of the systems like GHSA, et cetera, it's important to have national guidelines. So, so again, the investments you're making in the pandemic are going to pay off in the longer run um, to build systems. Um, the other thing I've noticed is that in some countries, there's a COVID-19 specific lab audit process 
And uh, once the audit is complete and the lab has met the requirements, the lab is allowed to go ahead and do lab testing. This is again a precursor for some kind of lab certification scheme or a lab registration and audit scheme that could in the future uh, focus on making sure that the country has bio-risk management capacity. And um, finally, a word about infrastructure. Um, I know that there are underserved areas in most countries where there is no lab infrastructure and people are making decisions about should we buy new labs, build new labs, or should we refurbish existing ones? And there are a lot of vendors who are very interested in selling prefab container labs. Um, a word of caution, please consult your biorisk association or your biorisk uh, bio experts before you go out and commit to buying labs. Um, and I will also say that there are a lot of vendors who are selling BSL-3 labs and they're selling mobile labs, which are both not required in order to mount an effective response to um, COVID-19. And keep in mind cost of operations and the long-term um, you know, ability to sustain these kinds of things. There are also biosecurity concerns. We know that our transport systems are not secure. And I can tell you that HSB and BRAP have an ongoing project that we had to put on hold because of the pandemic. And when we resume it, uh, it's going to look very different from uh, where we started. Um, but there have been examples of you know, COVID-19 samples, uh, trucks carrying them being hijacked, et cetera. We are also hearing that there is pressure to share samples. So in other words, labs are getting samples for diagnostic testing. They are passing those samples on to research labs and they're passing them on to research labs within the same institution. So for example, at a university. And in some cases, they are being passed on to the private sector. And this, the requests come in different ways. People say, oh, you know, we want to start COVID testing. Could you please share some samples so that we can get our PCR up and running? We need, we need controls. Um, others in the private sector are trying to get samples in order to develop diagnostics, in order to do research. And um, this is of concern um, because there is really no, um, uh, at the national level, we don't know who is sharing samples with whom and where these samples are going to end up. There needs to be clear guidance on authorized use of samples. In other words, if the samples are sent to you for diagnostics, they are to be used for diagnostics only. Uh, there needs to be guidance on sample transfer. If you want to transfer the samples to another lab, there needs to be an authorization process from DOH or MOH in the country. Uh, sample retention policy, how long should you keep the samples? How long are you allowed to keep the samples? And then there needs to be some kind of documentation on the storage and proper disposal of the samples. And there needs to be a mechanism available for consolidation. If you think there's a sample that is really valuable that you would like to save, um, you should be able to send it to the National Reference Lab or to another secure location for storage. And the reason these things are important is that you can imagine a post-pandemic scenario where labs all over the country have SARS-CoV-2 samples. And then how do you go and make sure they're secure and make sure that you know, they have been either transferred to the national lab or destroyed uh, you know, using proper disposal methods, et cetera. So guidance and policies need to be put into place now so that you can avoid this post-pandemic scenario where everyone uh, around the country has SARS-CoV-2 samples in their freezers. Research, um, as you know, uh, research is really needed for better diagnostics, therapeutics, and vaccines. Um, I'm showing you this little graph here and you see that research funding always increases after an outbreak. And you can see the increase after SARS, after MERS, and now with COVID. 
This is funding for coronavirus research. And a lot of these sources are private sources of funding. So nobody really knows anything about them until the research lab either publishes a paper or they file for a patent. That's when you realize that they have been working on SARS-CoV-2 and they have been doing all these things with it. So that is of concern. Uh, virus propagation, as you know, is both a safety concern and a security concern. Um, and research, a lot of research requires that. Um, also, any modification to the virus, like trying to build chimeras or et cetera, or introducing the virus into new hosts and other conditions that uh, those of you who know about dual use research of concern know that these are the kinds of uh, research that are of concern uh, for the community and for the country. Uh, and so um, research, um, uh, there's a lot of research going on that we don't know about, and there's a lot of research that could be of concern. And then, of course, you know, down the road somewhere, uh, there will be greater increase in virus hunting projects, uh, as I call them, increased coronavirus and bat surveillance. That's going to happen globally. Um, how does one do that responsibly? Uh, these are some of the questions that we are going, we are facing and we're going to face. And I just want to quickly say that there needs to be oversight of research at the national level, at the institutional level, at the individual level. Um, research is absolutely needed. It's really important and we need to encourage it as much as we can. But at the same time, we need to be careful. And I think, you know, for organizations like BRAP, uh, now's the time to raise researcher awareness. Um, and if they're going to propose a, a SARS-CoV-2 project, how do you do a risk assessment and mitigation uh, for it? Um, now's the time to uh, strengthen IBC or institutional bio-risk committees so that they can review such proposals and they can have oversight mechanisms. If there are funding agencies that are looking to fund coronavirus research, they should also be prepared to do review. Um, and then there, of course, you know, there isn't any, anywhere in the world, there isn't good national guidance for dual use research of concern. Um, there, is, there is some guidance, including in the US, but we don't think it is adequate or, you know, that it is, um, it, it, for example, it doesn't cover SARS-CoV-2 because it's not a select agent. Um, and then there needs to be, at some point down the road, there needs to be a national mechanism for review of um, such proposals that, uh, uh, of research that involves um, dual-use uh, dual research of concern, research that is risky. Finally, um, we are always told to look at the silver lining in the cloud and we have started using virtual platforms like never before. And I call on everyone to start using this technology to stay in touch with your counterparts. That, is, that applies to BRAP as well as to the members of BRAP and also for BRAP and other associations to reach more members. Um, for example, the APPA conference, the Asia Pacific Biosafety Association conference, the regional conference that happens every year, um, as well as the BRAP annual conference, I would recommend and, you know, we hope that at least part of that can be virtual or it can be live streamed so that a lot more people in the future can benefit from these kinds of events. And also for our training programs, I think everyone is now used to virtual training. So blended training programs would be really valuable. And this is something that um, uh, we would encourage. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. And once again, uh, BRAP, um, congratulations and all the very best for uh, the years to come. Um, thank you for this opportunity to address uh, the audience. Thank you, Dr. Prasad, for yet another moving talk that calls for action. BRAP and PAMIT members, 
now have something to think about for the betterment of ourselves, our institution, our families, our environment, of course, our country. BRAP is so fortunate to have a partner, collaborator, mentor, and a friend in you, Dr. Prasad. Again, our utmost gratitude for being our keynote speaker tonight. Thank you. At this point in time, may I draw your attention to the few of BRAP's collaborators and supporters who have been with us from BRAP's beginnings. And for some of them, they were with us already long before BRAP was even conceived. As I take honor in presenting the lifetime members and few founding members who unselfishly gave their time to send their video greetings for the anniversary. Let's watch this. Greetings from Washington, D.C. This is Beth Bennett with the Biosecurity Engagement Program with the Department of State. Happy fifth anniversary, BRAP. Thank you for all that you've done in bio-risk management. Stay safe, everyone, and I hope to see you all in person someday soon. On behalf of the International Federation of Safety Associations, it gives me great pleasure to congratulate the BioRisk Association of the Philippines on their five-year anniversary celebration. BIROP is an active member of IFPA and brings together a diverse community of individuals who share their passion for biosafety issues. Working on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic and often behind the scenes, BIROP members are guiding preparedness and response efforts. The IFBA congratulates BRAP for championing robust biosafety and biosecurity measures, and we look forward to our continued collaboration for many years to come. My name is Olga Chernyshova, and I work for CIDF Global. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate the Biorisk Association of the Philippines of their five-year anniversary. We did wonderful projects in the past, and I look forward to future projects with this amazing organization. Thank you. Happy anniversary, fifth anniversary to the Biorisk Association of the Philippines 2015 Inc. or BRAP. Five years ago, when many like myself were not even familiar with the terms bio-risk, biosafety, and biosecurity. But with the onset of our very challenging situation of the COVID-19 pandemic, these words, these terms are very relevant. So I would like to congratulate Dr. Martin Moreno, the President, the officers and the members of the BioRisk Association of the Philippines for this important milestone. To my co-advanced biosecurity officers in the pilot certificate, certificate program in the Philippines. Hope to see you all in person in the future. Again, thank you very much and congratulations. Happy anniversary to BIRAP and more power to the organization. Happy anniversary BIRAP. I would like to extend uh, greetings for our anniversary and uh, the vision of BIRAP to be the leader in teaching the laboratorian in uh, biosafety advocate, uh, biosafety and biosecurity uh, officer in guiding all laboratorians to have uh, biosafety or safety protocol in the laboratory. Thank you. 
congratulations to the Bayerisk Association of the Philippines for its fifth founding anniversary. In the past five years, I have witnessed how the organization has remained faithful to its mission. It was such an amazing experience to have worked and served inspiring people through Bira. Congratulations, more power, and God bless Bayerisk Association of the Philippines. Feliz Compleano, Bayerisk Association of the Philippines. This is Melvin Toca from Albay. Dios Mabalos. Congratulations, Mirap, on our fifth founding anniversary. Let us continue with our advocacy for a biosafe and a biosecure environment in today's pandemic times. More power. Anniversary, Mirap. Making this world a safer place. To more anniversaries, God bless. First and foremost, I would like to thank the Paris Association of the Philippines Officers, headed by the President Dr. Martin Miguel Moreno, for recognizing me. I'm so happy that I was chosen by this organization to give a greetings for you. I became the founding member. So much has changed in a short period of time. Thank you, Bira, for your endless support in providing us the knowledge and creating a safe healthcare system. Together, we will get through this. Mabuhay, Bira. Congratulations and happy fifth founding anniversary. Island of Hawaii. I would like to congratulate you on this fifth anniversary. More power and God bless. Mahalo. Happy anniversary by your association of the Philippines, Bira. I wish you all the best. Uh, let's continue with our advocacy, more learning fellowship towards um, ideal by your management practices. Bira, uh, more power. Privileged to have been part of the first few, the Dr. Martin Moreno and the rest of the team behind the success of BRAP. Congratulations! Happy fifth anniversary, BRAP! Congratulations, BRAP, on your fifth founding anniversary, headed by Dr. Martin Moreno and the rest of the organizing committee and officers and staff of the organization. A lot of achievements already. Keep it up and more power to you. Thank you for sharing your expertise in the healthcare organization. Congratulations. It never comes in a day. It comes with strong determination and hard work. May continue to inspire us for many years to come. All the best for your fifth anniversary, Vera. Of Hospital Makati's Pathology and Laboratory Department, I would like to congratulate the Bioris Association of the Philippines on its fifth founding anniversary. Congratulations to all the people behind. Hey everyone, who would have thought that by opening an unexpected email coming from an unfamiliar source would enable me to be a part of something wonderful? It is truly an honor and a privilege to be a member of this very meaningful and very purpose-oriented organization. Happy fifth anniversary, Bira, and congratulations. Thank you for the Philippine Association of Medical Technologists Incorporated, Bell 
Once again, thank you collaborators, partners, and founding members for taking time and sending the warm greetings. It brings good cheer to hear from you all. Now we will hear live greetings and messages from our BRAP advisor present, Dr. Socorro Lopisan, to be followed by messages and greetings from incumbent officers of BRAP. Dr. Coho. Ah, hello, good evening. I'm Coco Lupisan Moreno, advisor to BRAP, also a former director of RAPM. I'd like to say congratulations to BRAP on your fifth year anniversary. I'd like to thank you also for inviting Prasad. You know, it was very good to hear him talk about biosecurity. We've forgotten biosecurity in this COVID laboratories. Yes, it's something that we need to look into. No, five years is a milestone year. It's a time to look back to see uh, what you've done. And I've seen the videos, you've done a lot. There's a lot, there, but there's a lot more to be done. Looking forward, uh, you know, and I want to challenge you to be more empowered, to look for safe biosafety in your laboratories, because you know what you need. The, the field for biosafety training is wide and uh, I mean, there's a lot of people to be trained. There are government facilities which RITM can take care of and BRAP can take care of all the private sector. Uh, so maybe in the next few years, next years, um, BRAP will take care of um, PAMET, making sure that everybody in PAMET um, will be uh, knowledgeable about biosafety and biosecurity. Congratulations and thank you very much. Let's now hear thank from you. the Assistant Auditor of the Association. We have Mr. Larry J. B. Langam. It is indeed a joyous celebration as we mark BRAP's fifth year of existence. Personal congratulations goes to BRAP collaborators and its founding members who have seen the need and responded with enthusiasm in tremendously helping the organization as it take off in establishing awareness and core advocacy in biosafety and biosecurity for a safer workplaces and community. I join everyone in greeting BRAP's fifth anniversary. Indeed, BRAP is 45 at 5. So as a BRAP auditor, I'm Oliver Shane Dumawal and I would like to congratulate BRAP 
for the wonderful efforts that had been exerted by the association for the last five years in promoting laboratory by safety, by security, and by risk management. I enjoyed the association in also celebrating our collaborators and our partners. Uh, my dog seems to want to join also in greeting. And also, of course, to the members who have been very supportive of the activities of the association. We look forward to more years in serving the laboratory community in ensuring a secure, safe uh, environment. So congratulations, Peter. We now have the assistant treasurer, Ms. Michaela B. Sayo. Good evening, everyone. Sorry. Congratulations to Bear Up on its fifth anniversary. Pandemic has changed our lives in all aspects. Let me commend my fellow officers, collaborators, members of the association, and the leadership for keeping its commitment as the pillar of biosafety and biosecurity. May our enthusiasm continue in providing necessary knowledge useful in curving the health emergency. More power to the men and women of BIRAP in our journey to the new normal. Thank you, Ma'am Sayo. Let's hear now from the BIRAP treasurer, Ms. Luella A. Vertuccio. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, wishing all the best for BIRAP and congratulations. Happy PIP founding anniversary. And let me say, how privileged I have to be part of the association, Mabuhay BIRAP. Good evening again. Thank you very much, Ms. Luella. Let's hear now from the Assistant Secretary of BIRAP, Mr. Ariel Aquino. Good evening, everyone. I would like to congratulate the entire BIRAP officers as we celebrate our five years of hard work and camaraderie. Heartfelt thanks to our partner, PAMET, to our collaborators who always support us on our projects, to BIRAP members who continue to support us, and to everyone with us tonight to celebrate BIRAP's five years. I wish us all continued success. Thank you very much, Mr. Aquino. Let's hear now from the Secretary of BIRAP, Ms. Leila Lani M. Florento. Congratulations to BIRAP for its fifth year anniversary. Sapphire. I could still remember the time when we first met at Costa Vela Resort, Cebu, where we conceptualized this association. It was a resounding yes from the founding members and the excitement never wavered. With the leadership of Dr. Miguel Martin Moreno, he was always full of ideas and plans for the association. He will not be labeled as biosafety hero if not for his enthusiasm. Thank you for the partnership with PAMET with the full support of the chapters and the members. Dr. Moreno was able to reach all the chapters for the biosafety and biosecurity advocacy. We never knew we will have pandemic this year, and the learnings we received helped a lot. Thank you to our collaborators and our major partners. Your support helped us where we are today. Thank you for your unconditional support for the past five years, and we look forward to more partnership in the coming years. So again, congratulations to BIRAP and more years ahead of us. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Florento. Now let's hear from the BIRAP Vice President, Mr. Ronaldo E. Puno. Good, ev Good evening, everyone. Uh, it is my uh, distinct honor and uh, privilege to extend my heartfelt felicitations to BIRAP on the occasion of its fifth anniversary celebration. Having reached five years for an association is indeed a milestone. And during this defining period, BIRAP was able to attain and sustain its objectives, which now benefit not only the biosafety and biosecurity enthusiasts. It is in fact giving its share to nation building. 
I salute the prime movers of this association, the collaborators, founding members, and all BRAP members. May you continue to be the instruments in, in strengthening our capabilities and sharpening our competence on matters concerning biosafety and biosecurity, both especially in these very difficult and challenging times. Once again, congratulations and many, many more years for you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ronnie Puno. And now, of course, the greeting from the guiding star of BRAP, the biosafety hero and an advocate for laboratory biosafety and biosecurity, the president of BRAP, incumbent president and founding president, Dr. Martin N. Moren. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. See, I just want to thank everybody for simply being here, joining us on our fifth founding anniversary especially to our collaborate, collaborators, our lifetime partners. We have 21 lifetime partners, and then we have 67 founding members, and most especially to our part, official partner, the Philippine Association of Medical Technologies, headed by Ronaldo Puno, Ron, Sir Ronnie, and to the BRAP, and the PAMET members who are always there with us whenever we, ha we have a learning activity. I did not prepare a speech for tonight because simply I didn't want to talk long. I just want to thank everybody for being there and joining us in, for the next years in our, still in our advocacy. We have... Um, Many things already planned, especially those which were postponed due to the pandemic, we have already seen, which I will show in the presentation a few minutes from now. Again, thank you everyone for your unconditional support, especially to PAMET, to our collaborators, and all the members of both PAMET and Mira. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Martin, for that uh, message. Now for this segment, may we call on our next host, the BRAP Treasurer, Ms. Luella A. Bertuccio. Ms. Luella? Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am Luella Bertuccio, the incumbent treasurer of BRAP. And it is my pleasure to host this, this segment of the celebration. The two presidents of the respective associations, Dr. Moreno for Vira and Mr. Ronaldo Puno for the Association of Medical Technologies or PAMET, will individually give their presentation. Please take note that the questions of the trivia will be based on these two presentations solely. Okay, without further ado, it is my pleasure to give you the founding and incumbent president of BIRA, Dr. Miguel Martin Moreno, for his presentation, Five Years That Was. Good evening again. Before I start, I would like to touch on this quotation I found. Five years is such a long time, but it only takes one night to make it feel like yesterday. The title of my presentation is Five Years That Was, Milestones of BRAP. 2014 is the year I called on PAMET. If you remember in your 50th annual convention, I started to call PAMET and I, start, I said, let us collaborate, network, and be partners so that we share the knowledge in bringing down the LAIs of our times. First, we talked. First, our, our, my only concern at the time was the laboratory acquired infections. But now we have a gamut of risks, both by safety and by security risks, which we uh, need to look into. Anyone who talks about the history of BRAP should start with this uh, slide because this is the call that started it all. I chose to describe the pillars of the society of the association and we'll discuss this focusing on 
nine months in the planning of BRA. Bio risk management was our concern. And in analogy, you look at bio risk management as BRA itself, the three pillars who started the talking and the and the conceiving of the association was myself, Dr. Florento, and Sir Ronnie. And just like the AMP model, it has already developed into the new strategic framework. Because in actuality, after the three of us started talking, every time I would go home and while falling, while starting to fall asleep, I would consult with my advisor and she would give me tips on what to do, how to do it, how to do that. And every time there was something new, I would also consult with my other advisor who has the key to the history of BRAP in its, in its start beginnings up to the present. So these, ladies and gentlemen, are the pillars, the five pillars of the Bio-Risk Association. Philippines, Biological Risk Association Philippines. This was the original name we applied for, but the Security Exchange Commission kept on re returning the documents to us, telling us to change our name. So we played with their scheme, and at the end, they came up with our name. <laughs> and we had to change the logo at that time. And it was already 20, early 2017, May, when we received that. So the BRAP was conceived in 2015, but I took this from a uh, publication uh, and it describes what BRAP, BRAP is. It's non-government, it's non-profit association where all the member, officers and members work to serve the concerns of biological risk management. Uh, BRAP cooperates and collaborates with associations, more especially with biosafety and biosecurity, technology, research, private and public health or technology organizations, corporate or private throughout the Philippines and globally in the promotion of biosafety, biosecurity, and bio risk management as scientific disciplines. We, BRAP goes by the tagline, assess, mitigate, and monitor, which is more or less the focus of bio risk management and we stick to our vision we want BRAP wants to see the philippines with a secure laboratory workforce and safe laboratory working surroundings how will we do this we will try to be at the forefront of bio safety bio security and bio risk management so that we make implement innovative effective and efficient ways to con with concordant to local and international standards so that we improve the quality of life of the Filipino citizenry. Again, in 2014, the talk that started it all. And in 2015, I started to meet with PAMET leaders and we discussed how we will do it. And on the right side, you will see there the first activities we ever had to put this in table I will focus, I will call your attention to the administrative side. February, the first meeting with BIRA, with PAMET. Then in April, we talk, this is 2015, remember, I talk on a new association to handle laboratory by safety and by security risks. May to August, at first it was being discussed if it will be under the PAMET umbrella. And with more discussions, on September 2, 2015, there was a formal decision of the pillars for a new association in the partnership with PAMET to be called the Biological Risk Association of the Philippines. We filed in September 17 for the SEC, and it took us almost a year before they released the documents. In 2016, we had our first uh, general assembly First General Assembly, April 5, 6, and 7 at Costa Bella, as mentioned by Dr. Florento, and the general membership on April 7, where we wrote the constitution and bylaws. We ratified it there with all the 67 uh, members and officers, and the officers were appointed. Officers were appointed, take note, because at that time there was no election yet. So 
I handpicked the first officers and they all willingly agreed to help uh, establish the association. And on, on April 8, we had the first inaugural symposium with CBEP and DIPRA on strengthening laboratory networking Costa Bella, Mactan Island, Cebu. I would like to emphasize on what Dr. Prasad earlier said. He was, yes, he was with us in the beginning. In April 8, he was with us in Costa Bella. In April 8, the, we created the BRAP Technical Working Group, which will handle future activities. In June of 20, June 2 to 3 of 2016, uh, while kicking off at full speed, BRAP was introduced to the Asia Pacific by Safety Associations simply with a, a poster by our Assistant Secretary, Ariel Aquino. And then on June 3, in the meeting of the IFBA in Cambodia, BRAP was accepted into the International Federation of Bi Safety Association initially as an observer member. The I FBA, by the way, is, is based in Ottawa, Canada. <coughs> and this picture will always be in the history of BRAP. These are the lifetime and founding members. The lifetime members were the 21 people who I asked for support initially, 1,000 pesos each. And so our, the first funds of BRAP was 21,000 pesos. And the 21, after three years, the 21 incorporators, as we call them, were elevated to the status of lifetime members, wherein they, would, they do not need to pay any annual dues, and they're always free of charge in any um, annual convention. The rest are founding members who are there, a captured audience, and they willingly joined with the membership fee, of course, as the founding members of BRAP. Do you see yourselves there? So we move on. In 2017, we had our first annual convention at the Crown Plaza. And uh, as early as 2016, by the way, a PAMIT chapter started inviting BRAP so that by safety and by security would be advocated trying to cover the whole Philippines as of 2017. And to tabulate it, the BRAP president and in, in April 11 to 14 in Malaysia, the IFBA had their professional certification exams. And the, uh, myself and uh, some officers at the time took it and we all passed. Uh, security exchange commission papers was finally resubmitted, changing the name of Bio Biological Risk Association of the uh, Philippines to Bio Risk Association of the Philippines with the acronym BRAP 2015. SEC released the documents of BRAP. In July 5, we launched the new logo in the uh, souvenir program of that convention. And then we have here, in November of that year, 2017, we started the BIRA PAMET National Survey on Bi-Safety and Bi-Security. 2018, I would call 2018 the uh, La Biosafety Manual right chap year, wherein uh, when word came out that DOH would start uh, looking for the Bi-Safety Manual, practically all my weekends were uh, were given to the chapters who wanted to do by safety manual right chap. So practically, I already memorized the contents. And after a year, we have a new format now for the by safety manual as released by the ISO uh, in International Standardization Organization. So there's a new format again for the laboratory by safety. Manual. I'm already completing the module for this one, getting ready for the new normal when we start going out again and lecturing. And in 2019, 
These are the activities. You will see your chapters there. I call your attention to the upper left picture wherein the veterinarians, members of, of BRAP were, were brought to Baltimore, Maryland by uh, Dr. Cecilia Williams and BEP to attend the U U.S. Department of Agriculture Fifth International by Safety Biocontainment Symposium. And we all had posters for this. I think one of the winners was a uh, Filipino, uh, Dr. Jose Obidencio. I think he got one of the awards for best poster. In 2020, the only activity which happened was the BIRA Pakistan by Safety Association and H HSP laboratory by safety manual right shop in Colombo, Sri Lanka. We were all, Sir Oliver and I were traveling to and from Sri Lanka already in the COVID atmosphere. <laughs> Luckily, uh, when we came home, none of us developed our signs and symptoms. We've had six PIRA PAMET by webinars since May 28th. And you can all replay this on your own pacing, your own time, on, if you go to YouTube and look for BRAP Distance Learning Program. I think PAMET also has now their own YouTube channel. I just could not place it here because I did not know the, ori the original name they use. It must be the PAMET e-learning. And then BRAP con Credentialing and Competency Program for COVID-19 Laboratories. This is a training module composed of three eight-hour sessions. We have submitted this program of training for molecular diagnostics laboratories, specifically for COVID-19, to, uh, to the Department of Health, hopefully to get accreditation to become the train one of the training arms of DOH. And with my fingers crossed, because it has already passed and signed the evaluation, and it's just for the final signature of the DOH, uh, uh, the DOH committee handling this, it's just too bad that his, the mother of the doctor who to sign just passed away, so we have to wait again. Join me in praying for this so that we can start training you guys again. And the Fabit, Fabit conference in Panglao, Island Cebu will proceed in December 2020. That's how optimistic we are with the pandemic. And then the VET2 training program will be held in Pampanga in January of 2021. The, uh, Dr. Prasad has told me that we will continue with the transport and shipping of valuable biological materials specific, specifically for Luzon and Visayas, because we already did the Mindanao in 2019, uh, 2019, November. And lastly, we're looking forward to the fourth, the postponed fourth BRAP annual convention and international forum in 2021, July. I guess that's it for, for the most of the milestones. Let's look at the objectives. These are the objectives based on the constitution and bylaws to provide professional body. We did that. To promote risk assessment, safety, yes, we did that. To push for development advancement of bio-risk management, we have done that. To design and implement standard and guidelines for biosafety, biosecurity, and bio-risk management among Philippine laboratories. Yes, because of uh, Ma'am Angie Jimenez, who invited us to join the technical force technical working group for the development of the Philippine standard for biosafety and biosecurity. It is already out. And we, uh, Dr. Socorro Lupisan, Dr. Laila Florento, and myself were contributors, practically authors to this standard. So we did that. The other objectives to continue to work on DAC laboratory by safety, we did that. Promote safe management of biological materials, yes. To pr provide a setting for knowledge sharing, to enhance collaboration, to seek influence. I will just go on checking up to the last four, which we are still trying to achieve. 
biosafety, biosecurity, and bio risk management research. I already have a person in mind among the officers to handle this one. To produce an annual membership directory of the research, Sir Oliver, you better take a look at this. For to produce an annual membership directory, to re-stimulate networking, keep an online website. This is for Sir Ariel and Dr. Florento. Oh, sorry. To produce an, uh, to introduce an awards program. Oh, this is for Sir Ronnie, myself. Uh, we will start now look for the biosafety champion of the Philippines. Person who has influenced the change of his institution or the chapter with his, the weapon of by safety, by security, and by risk management. To introduce an award, that awards program, to ensure that all members, institutions, and organizations strictly adhere. This one, I will rub elbows with the people at the Department of Health. Uh, I will ask their help so that they start already inspecting and we will offer our services to help them make sure that laboratories in the Philippines follow a certain standard. When following certain standards, always remember the local Department of Health issue one says always super, supersede any international law. Remember that, everyone. With that, I will close my presentation. I think I said too much. And I will start by saying, PAMET and BRAP will continue to work for the Philippines we will continue to adhere to our vision and our mission. PAMET will always be our partner. Of course, there are other official, uh, there are other collaborators which I would like to thank for these past years. If you note, the second line at the bottom are the universities who have invited uh, BRAP to start advocating by safety and by security in them, in their in their universities. With that, I changed the closing slide. Five years that was because, because we, all, we will always embrace PAMET, our official partner, because you are the 85% of the people in the laboratories, the medical technologists, our frontliners. Thank you for your attention, everyone. Wow, thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Moreno, for giving us the milestone of BRA. It was amazing how far we have come as an association in just five years. And there is really so much what we can do when, you're, when you are having fun. Uh, for sure, all PAMIT members who have listened to Dr. Moreno's lecture in the past will attest to the pan and learning sessions under him. As mentioned by a former PAMIT president, when he explains, he makes difficult topics easy, but easy to understand. And para bang, ang, ang hirap intindihin, pero para sa kanya is, is easy. Uh, when he explained, and, and may I add, uh, congratulations to Dr. Moreno again for reaching out to the corners of the country, advocating for biosafety, biosecurity, and bio risk management. We all know if not for this pandemic, we could have covered all the regions of the country. Okay, we have to move on. Uh, let us now proceed uh, in our second presenter, the incumbent vice president of BRAP and the current president of PAMET, Mr. Ronaldo Puno, for his presentation entitled The BRAP PAMET Lab Affair. Mr. Puno? Okay, good evening. Good evening once again. I hope uh, you can see my slides. So, this uh, short presentation is actually, uh, I consider it a sequel of what Dr. Moreno has already uh, uh, presented. 
but uh, with a focus on the uh, various uh, activities that the two organizations uh, collaborated, and we call it uh, the Bira Pamet Lab Affair. All right, so let me just give you a brief background uh, based on the uh, observation of uh, our uh, Bureau President, Dr. Moreno, which he actually uh, verbalized in uh, uh, many of our discussions, particularly uh, during uh, meetings and uh, uh, yeah, during meetings with PAMIT. And uh, the last five years saw so a very strong partnership between the, the two organizations with common concern on biosafety, biosecurity, and bio risk management. And of course, those two organizations are the BRAP and PAMIT. And the said collaboration eventually uh, benefited not only medical technologies and laboratories, but even the communities in general. And since uh, BBBRM is a major concern in healthcare setting, it is uh, noteworthy to pour continuous efforts in it. And it is of paramount importance that laboratorians be equipped with necessary skills and knowledge and manage situations that call for it. And that there is a need to heighten the advocacy efforts in keeping up with the highest standards of biosafety, biosecurity, and bio risk management. Now let's try, let's have a bird's eye view on the Philippine setting in terms of biosafety and biosecurity. There was no active direct advocacy of biosafety, biosecurity, and bio risk management in laboratories working in diagnostic, medical, and clinical laboratories. There is no law governing biosafety and biosecurity in the Philippines. That majority of laboratories comply with the WHO Biosafety Manual and CDC's Biosafety for Microbiological and Biomedical Laboratories. There is a need to protect personnel from pathogens that they handle, and uh, we've proven that in this time of pandemic. And there is a need to protect the pathogens from falling into the hands of bad workers, and that is something to do with biosecurity. And what was the beginning of this lab affair? So as uh, earlier mentioned by Dr. Moreno, we cannot, we cannot talk about um, the history of BRAP without mentioning the call that started it all. And that is very, very true. So the call that started it all was actually a call made by uh, uh, Dr. Moreno during the 50th uh, annual convention of PAMIT. And he said that institutions are now called upon to establish their own laboratory biosafety and biosecurity program. Following references from World Health Organization, CDC, Sandia National Laboratories, and the CWA, and that components of LBBP must oversee every inch of the laboratory, and objectives and responsibilities should be well-defined, and the overseer and institutional biosafety committee per se must be well-established in functioning. Only then we can, we can see a safe, clean and healthy future for all of us, having excellent medical laboratory practice. And take note that these words were uttered five years ago. And look at our situation now, where in each and every word that was mentioned here is very, very much timely and uh, applicable to our current situation. And he said further that this is my call to PAMIT. So let us collaborate, network, and be partners to share our knowledge in bringing down the laboratory acquired infections of our time. So he also mentioned earlier that uh, initially he was only concerned about the laboratory infections, but uh, the situation today is very, very much different. So the two parties agreed to collaborate. It was the call, uh, it was the answer to the call made by uh, Dr. Moreno. So uh, in this picture, it was. Uh, uh, one of our very first uh, meetings uh, in relation to this organization. And we agreed both to collaborate and make a difference. So from the lab affair, it uh, bloomed into a five-year-old love story. Okay, so the timeline was between 2015 to 2019 after the call was made at the end of 2014. 
And again, in the uh, succeeding slides, you might uh, be seeing uh, some familiar slides that were already uh, presented, but highlighting again uh, the uh, important activities that uh, PAMET and BRAP uh, partnered in uh, during those uh, five years. So advocacy started in 2015, as you can see, and uh, it started in the, at the national capital region uh, in April of 2015. So it, uh, in this uh, picture, uh, it, it actually shows us the, uh, the first a few chapters of PAMET where the advocacy on biosafety were conducted. So, and the first advocacy lecture happened at the Veterans Memorial Medical Center. So that was the very, very first uh, uh, activity advocating biosafety. And of course, many others followed suit. So the highlights of 2015 uh, includes the initial meeting on a planned series of lectures nationwide, uh, several advocacy workshops and lectures held in different chapters, the discussion on how to link the new association with PAMET, as uh, mentioned by uh, Dr. Moreno, and the finally, of course, uh, uh, planning for the formal creation of uh, the BRAP okay, in, uh, on September 2. So that's why we are now celebrating our PIF year. Now, in 2016, uh, the advocacy continued, uh, which, actually, which, which was actually highlighted by uh, the inauguration of BRAP in Cebu, and then uh, planning for the first annual convention in 2017. So again, you'll see several chapters here um, participating and uh, uh, advocating uh, biosafety because during those early years, uh, biosafety and biosecurity was somehow uh, um, practically new or practically uh, alien uh, to many laboratorians. So that's why uh, we had to advocate it, its importance and its value. So uh, the highlights of uh, 2016 include our uh, personnel reliability program held in Cebu, the uh, first general membership assembly also in Cebu. Then there were more advocacy lectures in the chapter level, regional conferences, and even in the annual convention. And one very important thing that happened also during that year was the creation of the draft for the Philippine uh, Medical uh, Biological Materials of Concern list uh, held at Sofitel Hotel on August 16 to 17. And then the seminar workshop for basic biosafety and biosecurity in Marriott Hotel also participated by many PAMET leaders. Okay, so in 2017, uh, as we all know, um, it was uh, when the very first uh, BRAP convention uh, was held on, uh, on the, sorry, it's the second uh, BRAP annual convention uh, held on July 4 to 16. And then uh, we have uh, these highlights for 2017, particularly the, uh, uh, the PAMET BRAP Symposium, uh, which gathered more than 800 uh, participants. It is actually the biggest in terms of uh, the CP in terms of participation in CPD seminar during that time, it's uh, it's never been broken until now, except for those which were given for uh, for free. Then, of course, PAMET also uh, hosted the uh, training and certification on the IATA shipment and transport of biological materials uh, happened at Crown Plaza side by side with the first annual. Uh, PAMET, uh, ah, sorry, BRAP convention in partnership with PAMET. And of course, a seminar workshop on uh, international patient safety guidelines and uh, initial workshop on the preparation of laboratory biosafety manual. So in 2018, uh, BRAP was gearing towards some sort of uh, uh, specialization. And as you can see here, more and more uh, chapters are... Uh, are um, inviting okay, the organization through Dr. Moreno to conduct sort of uh, biosafety and biosecurity uh, activities, be it a workshop, be it a seminar, a lecture, and different forms. So for 2018, 
uh, as also as, uh, highlighted by Dr. Moreno, it was the year of uh, laboratory biosafety manual workshops. Okay, workshop also on bio preparedness and incident management, applied biosafety and biosecurity lecture on uh, competency and credentialing program, and of course one very important activity was the uh, a survey on the status of biosafety and biosecurity in the Philippines. And then for the second time, the IATA Transport and Shipping Biological Materials Training and Certification course was also held in conjunction with the second BRAP annual convention of, uh, of course, in partnership with PAMI. So 2019 was highlighted by more laboratory biosafety manual workshops. And then of, again, the IATA Transport uh, uh, course and the third annual convention and the first international forum was held for the first time outside Manila. It was held in Iloilo. And then, of course, we had a seminar workshop on transport of biological samples with careers and airline companies. Then we had, of course, our uh, free CPD as well and the seminar workshop on bio bio preparedness and incident management. So if you look at the Philippine map, you'll see how, uh, how wide uh, extent and extensive the coverage of uh, the advocacy, which um, our laboratorians, PAMET Medical Technologies are very, very much, uh, very, very thankful uh, because of that effort, because now uh, we, we see the value, we see the importance of all these things that we've been working on since five years ago. We never thought that the uh, pandemic will come in 2020. We did not do it intentionally to prepare people for this situation, but things happened that way. And we are very uh, fortunate that uh, early on uh, we were uh, equipped with some knowledge and skills that we need in this time of, in this difficult time. Okay. So at this point, I just would like to share uh, some highlights of the Philippine Biosafety and Biosecurity Survey. Uh, and the purpose of this survey is to examine the policies and standards that Philippine laboratorians employ to advance laboratory biosafety and biosecurity in their laboratories. And specifically, we need to characterize the practices, equipment, and facilities used by these laboratorians and examine the effectiveness of existing national and state regulations in the context of the infectious pathogens that they handle. So again, if you look up the... Uh, purpose of the survey as if we know what will happen okay uh, in 2020 okay so uh, it was purely coincidental but definitely is very useful okay so that survey was actually uh, based on uh, responses to a 30 question online uh, survey conducted by BRAP and PAMET and facilitated by the bioinformatics team from Sandia National Laboratories uh, the questionnaire was designed to be answered in 18 to 20 minutes, okay, and the geographical distribution was divided into the main Philippine region so that uh, uh, everybody is well represented. It was open to all laboratorians of PAMET and other diagnostic and research lab as identified upon voluntary entry into the survey. And uh, finally, the results were tallied by a licensed application and analyzed during statistical package, using the statistical package for social sciences. So what, was the object, what were the objectives and goals of the survey? Uh, first, to show the extent of coverage and bio, of biosafety and biosecurity, present the pathogens and or toxins handled by Philippine laboratorians based on laboratory level and region, present status for biosafety, biosecurity policies and procedures, show loopholes on biosafety, biosecurity, bio, uh, bio risk management programs, suggest and guide repairs to the system, and strengthen standards and accountability measure. Now, so if we were able to uh, do it early on and we were able to, uh, to uh, address these issues, maybe the situation today, might be a bit uh, easier. So, so this is just the scope, of the questionnaire, so the distribution. So I will not, uh, I will not um, mention it uh, one by one because these are thirty questions. So I'm just flashing it. 
So just in case you are not familiar with that particular survey, so these were the questions actually asked. Okay, so there. So those are 30 questions. And the conclusion, what was the conclusion of the survey? The survey shows that uh, people or laboratorians are more aware of possible biosafety concerns than potential biosecurity. Second, 63% conduct relatively detailed risk assessment. Third, at ignorance or dismissal of the possible harm a particular pathogen may cause. Next is that half consider the natural route of infection or agents pathogenicity. Next is that majority handle pathogens okay, at one BSL lower than that recommended by the WHO or the CDC and that there is a desire to stay connected with colleagues that is best way to keep them updated. Other parts of the conclusion uh, show that most laboratories employ simple biosecurity measures and that respondents turn to the WHO laboratory safety manual and CDC's uh, BMBL and that obstacles can be more readily overcome by increased communication via continuous collaboration with the BioRISK Association of the Philippines. So again, if you look at the conclusion that could actually give us a, a better perspective on the current okay, biosafety uh, situation in the country. And the other recommendations include uh, ensure updated knowledge and information. Uh, that's why we are conducting uh, seminars, workshops, trainings. Suggested that advocacy on biological risk management be made a priority. Okay, now it's a, it's really one of the priorities. Uh, biosecurity should make an advocacy comeback this time with focus on the scenarios and possible outcomes of breaches and bioterrorism plots, and that PAMET, BRAP, and PBMA collaboration through BRAP's activities to gear our partnership towards One Health. And of course, we need to continue the PAMET BRAP membership. So there is now uh, a new, new updated modules based on the WHO uh, Laboratory Biosafety Manual uh, released on, in August 2019. And of course, we are gearing towards the BRAP uh, Credentialing and Competency Program, at which we hope uh, we'll be able to accomplish uh, by 2021. There's a lot, uh, there's so much, uh, planned activities supposedly for 2020, but uh, everything changed after pandemic came, okay? So the final message was actually uh, taken from uh, um, the message I gave uh, during the uh, second annual convention of BRAP, and I just would like to uh, re-echo these words that uh, we are very proud of the product of the strong and the selfish collaboration between PAMET and BRAP, which started in 2015. As a partner, we are very happy to see how BRAP continuously evolved and is now considered a formidable force and authority when it comes to matters concerning biosafety, biosecurity, and bio-risk management, as evidenced by the magnitude of accomplishments it has in its credit in so short a time. So with that, I'd like to just acknowledge a few people uh, in relation to the content of the presentation, Dr. Martin Moreno, Dr. Socorro Lopisan, Dr. Laila Florento, as part of the uh, study, Professor Oliver Domawal, Mr. Larry Langaman, Mr. Ariel Aquino, of course, BRAP, uh, PAMET, and the Sandia National Laboratories. So thank you very much. And once again, uh, congratulations to BRAP and looking forward to a stronger partnership between PAMET and BRAP. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ronnie Puno. Uh, that was a very, uh, what, what can I say, dramatic and romantic way of showing the intense partnership of Amit and Bira. And it really takes two to tango, as it is said. Dr. Moreno, I remember, mentioned to me in the past that 
BRAP would not have made it this far uh, if not for the unconditional support of PAMEP. And Mr. Ronnie Puno has shown the evidence of the, of the relationship of the two associations. So on behalf of that, uh, again, congratulations to BIRA for the fifth founding anniversary. And thank you again, Mr. Martin Moreno and Mr. Ronnie Puno. Once again, good evening. Thank you very much, Ms. Luella, for hosting that segment of our virtual celebration. We now give the floor to two new moderators for this new segment of the fifth anniversary celebration. May I now call on the BRAP Assistant Treasurer, Ms. Micaela Sayo, and BRAP Public Relations Officer, Mr. Louis Berlin Adam. Again, good evening. At this point is the launching of the Laboratory Biosafety Manual. May I call on Sir Ronaldo Puno and Dr. Miguel Martin Moreno to formally unveil the Laboratory Biosafety Guidance, a BRAP and PAMET project. Hello so again, everyone. <coughs> At this point, uh, another highlight of tonight's celebration, we present to you BRAP, BRAP and Summit Project, which was funded by the U.S. Department of State by Security and Research Program and CRDF Global. CRDF is an independent nonprofit organization that promotes international scientific and technical collaboration ad who administered grant funding for this project. So this is how the manual looks like. This is the manual itself. Uh, I, I hope it looks too bright. Anyway, maybe with Sir Ronnie, he will be able to show the manual better, uh, Sir Ronnie. Okay, so uh, this is, oh, it's not really very clear, but let me, wait, let me try removing my virtual background. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. It would be better. Okay, so this is the uh, prototype of uh, the uh, laboratory, uh, the BIRA PAMET uh, Biosafety uh, Guidance on COVID-19 Testing for Laboratorians. No? So, so as you can see, so this is a cover. And then, of course, uh, these are uh, the uh, first uh, few pages of uh, uh, the manual. Okay. So... Uh, we all know that the COVID nine. Oh, wh why why did we decide to uh, to uh, come up with this uh, biosafety guidance? So we all know that COVID nineteen uh, exposed uh, the present condition of our healthcare system, and even the survey shows us uh, how it is. And definitely, current situation uh, paved the way for BRAP and PAMET okay, to think beyond the challenges and uh, try to come up with uh, something very meaningful and very useful in our fight against the uh, pandemic. So with the concerted efforts of those involved in its publication, uh, the BRAP PAMET Biosafety Guidance for Laboratorians was born. Dedicated people from both BRAP and PAMET unselfishly shared their expertise to come up with this manuscript, which we can also which we can also call a laboratory master masterpiece, and we are very very proud of this product of that hard work. Doc, uh, I'd like to share with you the people behind the handbook. The editor in chief and project leader is Sir Ronnie Puno, associate 
associate editor and advisors, uh, yours truly, myself. The assistant project leader is Professor Oliver Shane Dumawal. The managing and circulating editor is Dr. Laila Florento. And the copy editor is Sir Ariel Angelo Aquino. The contributors to the contents of the manual are the following in no particular order. Uh, Sir Ronnie Puno, Dr. Martin Moreno, Professor Oliver Dumawal, Dr. Laila Florento, Sir Ian Medina, Sir Louis Berlin Cadao, Dr. Fidel Malbas, Ma'am Micaela Sayo, uh, Sir Larry J. Langaman, and Dr. Jose Obidencio. Uh, uh, when we were planning, uh, by the way, the peer reviewers of this manual are the executive director of the International Federation of Bi Safety Associations, Ms. Maureen, Maureen Ellis, and two people from the Department of Health, namely Ma'am Angie Jimenez and Dr. Socorro Lupisan. And if I may add, uh, this bio safety guidance is actually divided into five parts, following the standard laboratory cycle of pre pre analytical, the pre analytical, analytical, the post analytical, and post post analytical stages. It was designed in such a way that laboratorians will find ease in using this handbook as it is patterned after the usual protocols in the laboratory. This is user friendly as related topics are grouped accordingly for easy reference. And we are really hoping that this will help and serve its, its users as intended. I have already seen questions in the chat room and the majority of the questions are asking, how will we be able to get or buy a copy, a copy of this? Actually, uh, the manual is already in press it is being printed at the moment. And if I'm not mistaken, Sir Ronnie and Mam Laila has sent PAMET chapter presidents to ask for a list of the, I'm not very good at it. Sir Ronnie, paano ginawa in circulation? Yeah, so Bureau and PAMET intends to distribute copies uh, of the guidance for free to as many laboratorians as possible in the country. Of course, with the priorities given to those who submit information, uh, we've sent communication to uh, the different chapters and uh, asking for some lists. And I hope uh, at this point, uh, you've already submitted your, your information. And of, because we will be uh, prioritizing those uh, hospitals and laboratories from the secondary to tertiary categories uh, level, and uh, we'll definitely uh, uh, do our best to to reach uh, as many laboratories as possible, not only in Metro Manila but uh, in the entire country. So our circulation editor, Dr. Laila Florento is now working on the list so that so better make sure that you have uh, submitted also already um, the uh, information <laughs> of your institution okay so with that doc i think uh, uh, we should now say that uh, we are okay officially launching what we call this is a product of uh, so much hard work. We've worked on it for about uh, six months, and uh, finally, it's now it's now in the uh, to be released anytime soon. So we call it the Bira Pamet by Safety Guidance on COVID-19 testing for laboratories, which we hope to be very useful to each and everyone handling um, samples in the laboratory, particularly on COVID-19. But of course, it is not limited to COVID-19. You can also use it in some other situations that we call for. Once again, this is the PAMET BRAP Biosafety Guidance. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Sir Ronnie and Dr. Martin Moreno. For the next segment of our program, we have still with us the BIRAP Assistant Treasurer, Ms. Micaela Sayo, as moderator. Ms. Colleagues Ella. and friends, colleagues and friends, congratulations to us on our fifth year of the Biosafety or BioRisk Association of the Philippines 2015, Inc. I'm very much thrilled that I'm part of this milestone in the history of BRAP. We will go now to the highlight of our celebration, the candle blowing of the five pillars of BRAP. Dr. Martin Moreno, Sir Ronnie Puno, Dr. Laila Florento, Dr. Coco Lupisan, and Sir Ariel Aquino. So each of them will be holding a candle each candle symbolizing the five years of BRAP's existence and advocacy in spreading biosafety, biosecurity, and bio-risk management. Dr. Moreno summarized the last five years in his presentation, and Sarani showed how BRAP and PAMET did it too together. Now, the five of them will seal the celebration by blowing their candles and making this milestone part of BRAP's history. Okay. Shall we count pillars? Yes. The five pillars of BRAP, Dr. Martin Moreno. Oh, okay, oh. now blow, sir. Okay, blow, blow na po. Three, sir Ronnie. One, two, three. Okay, as in every celebration, especially for anniversaries, we have the wine toasting ceremony. The five will now raise their glasses for a toast. So join me in toasting the fifth founding anniversary of the Bioris Association of the Philippines, Inc. Wishing us all continuous le learning. Uh, with us, several uh, virtual participants who would like to deliver their uh, online greetings. So let's start off with the treasurer of PAMET, Ms. Eleanor Garcia. Mon Ellen? I have felt photos to be wrapped on his fifth year founding anniversary today. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, it has been a very challenging year for us medical technologists. Thanks to BRAP, in partnership with PAMET, for relentlessly conducting seminars.
Let's now hear another online greeting from the Board Director of PAMET, Ms. Maria uh, uh, Cristina Sebastian. Ma'am Rita? In celebration of BRAP's fifth anniversary, I would like to express my congratulations to all its officers, President Doc Martin Moreno, and wish the association's continued success in the years to come. Congratulations for your fifth anniversary, BRAP, and a pleasant evening to everyone. Thank you very much, Ma'am Rita. Let's now hear another online greeting from Ma'am Sari Barido of Pamet Iloilo. Ma'am Sari? Okay, so um, Namsari might be the, is experiencing some difficulties with her connection. So let's hear all the way from Mindanao, from Bukidnon, a very important partner of BIRAP, Ms. Dr. Jose Obedencio Jr. Dr. Jo? Good evening, everyone. Congratulations to the Biomarine Association of the Philippines on its fifth anniversary. We are very fortunate that BIRAP has been in the forefront of One Health, reaching out not only to the medical and the allied health professionals, but also to us in the veterinary sector. So way back in 2017, when I joined BRAP, we attended the first, uh, 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 one of the speakers of the first national convention of BRAP. And I'm very glad that we have continued our partnership in the following year. So for the next seven years, congratulations to the rest of the board and especially to Dr. Martin and for more holistic collaborations in the future. Congratulations to everyone. Thank you, Dr. Joe. Now another greeting from an, a very important partner from the Department of Health. Let's hear from Ms. Angie Jimenez. Ms. Angie. Good evening, everyone. Okay. Good evening, everyone. First of all, I would like to congratulate BIRAP for its fifth anniversary. BIRAP has been a partner in the HFDB Health Facility Development Bureau Department of Health programs when it comes to biosafety and biosecurity. They help us develop the manual on biosafety and biosecurity. They are also our partners during trainings, especially in the packaging and transport uh, of specimens. HFDB hopes to have a continued partnership in the future. future. Again, congratulations and mabuhay. Thank you, Manchi. Another online greeting from Mr. Mark Raymond Nava of Our Lady of Guadalupe Colleges. Dean Mark. In behalf of my institution, Our Lady of Guadalupe College and our association, PASMET, the Philippine Association of Schools of Medical Technology and Public Health, I would like to congratulate all the people behind the success of BRAP. Your individual as well as collective efforts, hard work and perseverance have paid off. Evident to that is your five fruitful years as an association whose advocacies have benefited, without exaggeration, millions of Filipinos. And we thank you for that. Thank you very much to all the active members and officers of BRAP for the past five years and for your service and most especially this hardworking and ever-active founding and incumbent president, Dr. Martin Moreno. 
Once again, congratulations and mabuhay Bira pa. I'm sorry, Barido. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Yes. To Doc Martin and the officers and board of directors of BRAP, thank you for giving me this opportunity to extend my warmest congratulations on your fifth founding anniversary. It is truly an honor to be here tonight virtually and be part of another milestone of this prestigious organization. Looking back, I am privileged and grateful for being a founding member and recipient of various trainings and workshops from different parts of the country. Thank you so much for the camaraderie, experiences, and knowledge we have shared. Good luck on your future endeavors. God bless and keep safe, everyone. And once again, congratulations, beer up, and good evening to all. Thank you. Okay, so that concludes our online greetings. For anyone who wishes to also deliver their message, you can post your uh, greetings in the chat box of our Zoom console. Thank you very much. And I hand it, you over back to Ma'am Sayo. Mamela? Uh, thank you for your greetings. You are now officially included in the recording video of this celebration. Now for the closing remarks, may I now call on the BRAP Vice President and PAMET National President, Mr. Ronnie Puno. Okay, so good evening for the end time. We've come to the closure of our e celebration with the theme Fortified at Five. We have reserved the closing remarks segment where we will explain the chosen theme and why at the closing you will ask simply so that each and every one of us will go home tonight remembering the celebration being, at, being the start of the next big years ahead for BRAP and PAMET. With all of you by our side, it is you our members led by the officers who will, be, who will bring BRAP forward to the next years ahead of us. BRAP and PAMET carried the association in the past years to where we are now. An association built on advocacy, transparency, and camaraderie. We learn while having fun so that the issue of concern is accepted with an open, amiable heart. We are proud of being transparent in everything we do and BRAP is open to your scrutiny and suggestion so we continuously abide by our vision and our mission. And finally, we embrace the camaraderie we have in our association and live by the thought that we all learn while having fun because, because it is the way to learn and eat by, by heart. With that, I formally close tonight's e-celebration, now fortified by each and everyone's presence as an officer, a member, and as an association. Good night, everyone, and God bless BRAP and PAMET, and God bless to all of us. Once again, congratulations, and thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you very much, Sir Ronnie Puno. So at this point, we have now come to the BRAP trivia exam. The link to the exam will be flashed in the succeeding slide. And the link will only be open for the next 30 minutes. Everyone who will answer the trivia exam will receive an e-certificate commemorating your participation in this virtual celebration with compliments from the BRAP organizing committee. The top two BRAP and PAMET members will be receiving a free registration pass in each association's first post-COVID physical convention in 2021. Fingers crossed. There will be two winners for BRAP and two winners for PAMET as well. With that, I am now flashing for everyone the link to the BRAP trivia exam. Thank you very much for witnessing the Sapphire celebration of Bira, 45 at 5. May God bless us all. Be safe, be biosafe, please, and have a good night.